Investing in the stock market is gambling? Hmm. I'm going to read a little quote out of this book here, Our Crowd. My uh, wife has been reading this and she was reading or telling me about some of this and I said, I think I need to do a video on that one. That's pretty, pretty incredible stuff here. Um, page 29, I'm going to start down here at the bottom. Um, New York was a merchant's city. It had become the chief wheat and flour market of the nation, shipping over a billion sacks of flour a year to Europe and dispatching the major share of the country's cotton. It was also a gambler's city and the young arriving immigrants, immigration itself was one of the biggest gambles of the day, only heightened the feeling of risk and speculation that was in the air. In the modern age of consumer goods, it is hard to imagine New York as a place where, though there was a great deal of money about, there was really very little to buy. But such was the case. In the absence of goods and luxuries in shops, New Yorkers spent their money gambling, buying and selling mortgages, bonds, IOUs, and promissory notes. In 1792, the New York Stock Exchange, older even than London's, was formed under the famous Buttonwood Tree at the corner of Wall Street, and in 1817, it had been formally incorporated with a set of rules which, by today's standards, were delightfully lax, but which did require a listing of companies whose shares were being offered for trading. All over the country, people were wanted, who wanted to gamble were turning to Wall Street. By the time of August Belmont's arrival, this casual bazaar was doing a volume of hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Farmers in the new western lands were selling mortgages to buy stocks and bonds. Small manufacturers were both investing and offering their own shares for sale. Banking, though it had never been, uh, excuse me, had it never had much order or logic or even rules, had had a certain uh, predictability. Suddenly, almost overnight, it seemed it became fast, frantic, and speculative. <laughs> so what we now consider as a legitimate thing, you know, investing in Wall Street, Wall Street, what's the Wall Street Journal have to say and everything, it all came from gambling and speculation. And it's about, this book is called Our Crowd, The Great Jewish Families of New York, and it is not an anti-Semitic book. They are admitting it. How all these different people... Uh, Jews, the, the mingled Jews that joined with Rome. There you have page 29. I'll get in here closer so you can see it. You can pause it and read it if you want to. What I read there. And then the next page, just to show you that I'm not lying about what it says. If you really want to pause it and read it there, you can do that. And um, it gets into a lot of the big family names, the Seligmans and the Warburg, Paul Warburg, the, one of the creators of the Federal Reserve. And, you know, again, they're, they're just bragging about this whole thing. They're just showing the different ways that they, you know, made their fortunes from not working and gambling, speculating. And I'm just going to, you know, we'll sell mortgages and, and bonds and stocks and all these other things. You see, there are a number of sins that Jesus Christ knew that the Jewish people were doing, and he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Jesus came as the Messiah to the Jews, and they rejected him. But when he came, he knew certain sins that they were doing, and Jesus just kind of put a little bit of pressure on those certain sins, and uh, that's why they wanted to kill him. Let me show you. Luke chapter 11. Let's go to Luke chapter 11 in your King James Bible. Very important you have a King James Bible because it's the only English translation that God's blessing is upon. There are certainly translations in other languages and things, but I'm an English-speaking preacher, English-speaking Bible. Um, or English, a uh, Bible written in English. It doesn't really speak, per se. Uh, but the Lord will put it into your mind at just the right moment. Uh, Luke chapter 11 and verse 37. Let's read here. Speaking about Jesus, it says, And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him, and he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but inward 
but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Jesus obviously knew about cleanliness. I've heard atheists say, he didn't even know, God manifest in the flesh didn't even know about basic hygiene. Of course he did. He's trying to show something symbolically here. People are a little dumb sometimes. Um, they would symbolically wash and things like this and go through all this ritual stuff and everything. And Jesus just goes, eh, to that religious ritual stuff. Um, verse 40, ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? But rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets. Oh, you're a Wall Street investor. Oh, really? Oh, you're a Seligman. Oh, a, a Warburg. Oh, 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 I'm such an honor to meet you. And oh, it's, your house is so huge and everything that you financed with gambling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the wrath of God is coming upon these people. It really is. Doesn't give a Christian a right to hate the Jewish people. But you should look at them and it should hurt you. And you should say, boy, they really fell away from the Lord. And you can see it. Read the Old Testament the whole way through to the end of the New Testament. You can see how the Jews fell away. It's very sad. Um, but let's continue here. Um, verse 44. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand that some of the Jewish connections and things like that, and they're mingled. They mingle themselves. They blend in especially with the white Japhetic races. And that's why the Bible says that they are miry clay. Right? Uh, flesh is, is likened to clay in the Bible, but the Jews, the fifth kingdom there, it's miry clay and iron that's mixed together and that they don't cleave one to another. There's problems there. Um, verse 45, Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thou, thus saying, thou reproachest us also. And he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers! For ye laid men with burdens grievous to be borne, and ye yourselves touched not the burdens with one of your fingers. You don't, you don't actually do any kind of physical labor, is what the Lord's saying to the lawyers there. Think about all the lawyers and the underwriting and all the other stuff that goes on with um, you know, Wall Street and all the stuff connected with Wall Street. The gambling that goes on there with the stock markets and everything else. Pretty bad. Um, verse 47. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation." From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple, verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, in ye hindered. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently, and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him, and seeking to catch something out of his mouth, that they might accuse him. Uh, you'll notice that if you are saved, if you are a uh, Christian. People will ask you all kinds of questions. and Well, what about this? Well, what about that? And not even related half the time. Um, and they're trying to catch some kind of a way that they can say, Oh, well, see, I proved you wrong. Therefore, you're not right in other matters or something like this. It's insanity. Um, but I want you to remember this whole thing. Jesus Christ, one of the reasons he went after the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and here in this case the lawyers, is because they were making financial uh, transactions, finding ways to use usury, which is basically I'll lend you money and then you pay it back with interest, and then they learn how to do all the thing of increasing interest rates and what about inflation, we'll, we'll hyperinflate the currency and we'll make printed currency instead of physical you know, precious metals, uh, which the Bible is, you know, that's the money system in the Bible there. And they come up with all these schemes 
to make it look like they're wealthy and that they're blessed of God and whatever else. I have insurance policies to cover every single thing and, and I can just invest in the stock market and I will, I will get wealthy by using other people's money. Well, isn't that, you know, theft? <laughs> Is, aren't you a thief if you're getting wealthy from other people's money? Oh, no, no, no. Because, see, I do it the respectable way. I go to the bank and I take out, you know, people put their hard-earned money into the bank and then the bank lends their money to me and I go out and I buy a bunch of stuff with debt and then I get other people to pay off my debts and then I take the profit off the top of that and then I get wealthy from that and then I can increase more debt and, and do more leveraging and all this other stuff. It's theft. And you'll stand before God someday and have to give an account for yourself. And I know most of them, they don't believe in God for one second, but they will. They take their last breath, just like that, they're before God. It is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, written to the Hebrews, hmm, um, you will die someday, and you will give an account for what you have done. And uh, the scheming and the, the stuff that these people do, buying titles of preferment, having surgeries done to remove their, you know, Jewish type features and things and, and getting into all this stuff, all the financial scheming and little things that they're trying to do and whatever else, it, it boggles my mind. It really does. And I think that's the reason for the time of Jacob's trouble. The Lord has seen enough of this kind of stuff right here. And he's saying, okay, uh, you've been gambling, you've been earning money through fraud, through stealing from other people. Um, you're, and you're lazy. <laughs> That's why these people do it. They're just traveling around all the time and I'm going to invest in this stock and I watch the, the markets and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and whatever else. And, and a lot of them, they don't even believe in saving money because money is just sitting still. It's not making you money. So therefore you have to continually just more, the more money you get in, the more you're in reinvesting and putting it out there and whatever else. And you have guys like Robert Kiyosaki, and he's just out there. Oh, brilliant man. He's not brilliant. He's wicked. All right? He's a wicked man that says, oh, I've, I've made wealth through debt. Okay, that's, that's like saying I've, I'm, I've created health through sickness. <laughs> no, wealth does not come from debt. Maybe the illusion of wealth. Oh, he has lots of numbers connected to his name. Yeah, but he's $1.6 billion in debt. Uh, how is that wealthy? Well, you see, the way that this thing works, because you're just, you're small man thinking or whatever. Well, praise Lord, I'm glad that I'm a small man thinking. I wouldn't want to be an idiot that thinks that he's wealthy with all that kind of debt. But the way that the thing works is you buy or you get yourself into debt when interest rates are low and things and you can put and you work out the deals and things. And then hopefully someday when the currency hyperinflates, then I'll, my $1.6 in debt if we get to be like Zimbabwe, where they're carrying around $200 trillion bills, then I can just pay it off quickly with my hyperinflated currency, and therefore then I'll be debt-free, I guess, or something, so I can start the whole process over again. You see, it's the, the issue here is not so much about how you're making your money. It's the mindset of just continually just greed all the time. I have to continue to, to you know, use other people to make money for me. And uh, by the way, the thing about killing the prophets and shedding blood and whatever so that they can get wealthy, uh, you know what the greatest example of that is? Not so much the killing the prophet, prophets, but the, the shedding of blood? War. That's how these people make lots of money. That's where the big money comes in. That's why they like to kind of stretch those wars out. Like I did a video a little while ago with uh, Biden, you know, coming to Zelensky over there in Ukraine and signing a deal that we're going to, you know, keep this war going here for 10 years, 10 more years. You know, well, I ba basically, uh, you know, it started in 2014, if you really want to get into it, the invasion of Russia coming into Ukraine in 2022, but started 2014, that's 2024, that's 10 years, now we're going to do another 10 years, a 20-year war. Cha-ching, 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 make lots of money. Oh, look, they just blew up some airplanes over there. <laughs> That's good. They'll have to order more. That means I make more money. Um, oh, a whole bunch of soldiers died? Hmm, that means lots of weapons were destroyed and uniforms and all these other things and, and insurance policies and, oh, I can make lots of money here. Uh, no answer. No answer for it. All these people don't, uh, 
Don't envy them. Uh, their damnation is just. That will be it. Thank you very much for watching.